Predictions, ladies and gentlemen, the Streaming Enderman here, back again with another video. And in today's video, I'll be taking a look at the Open L number 7 Chestnut and Garlic Knife. Now, I was attracted to this knife for various reasons. The first being, well, that it was rather inexpensive, but also, there are a few things about this knife that are very unique, and I figured would be an interesting thing to look into for the channel. Now, I quite like the number 7 as a size. It is a bit bigger than the number six. The six has more variations, but I like the size of the seven a bit better. But in the meantime, let's have a look at this knife. Comes in a simple cardboard box. This is part of the Nomad cooking series that OpenL does, along with the number eight mushroom knife. And let's do a quick look at this particular knife. So to start, it says the OpenL Savoir France, Number seven, made in France, got the Vero block locking ring, and the blade, which is a very nice little hawk bill. It's got the crowned hand, and it says Open L Enox. So this is a stainless blade, not a carbon blade. And yeah, there are a few things that are quite interesting about this knife. The first being what it's made for. Now, in the description right here on the other side of the box, and if you'd like to read this, you can just pause it in, and you can read it in any language that is available. But for example, here in English, it says, The 4 centimeter stainless steel 12C27M blade is curved and pointed to easily pierce and peel chestnuts and garlic cloves, and quickly stone fruits like apricots and plums for making jams and tarts. Varnished chestnut handle, the Vero block system locks blade in an opened or closed position. Now... That is pretty much what this knife is made for. So, peeling garlic cloves, cutting garlic cloves, peeling chestnuts, and pitting fruit. So, plums, apricots, avocados, etc. Now, while yes, I think that I could use this around, you know, the kitchen and the house for food preparation along with the mushroom knife, I think this would make a very good foraging tool, hence Nomad Cooking. Because this is a folding knife, you could easily shove this in your pocket or your bag and head out to the forest along with your mushroom knife for a day of foraging. And I've got to say that that idea sounds very, very nice. I'm not experienced in mushrooms, so for all I know, I'd pick a destroying angel and I'd be dead five minutes later. But, you know, I think I'll, I'll leave that to the experts. But even so, you can go foraging with this knife because of its very lightweight and small size. It would make a great knife for being out in the forest and hunting for some fresh food. Of course, that's not why I necessarily bought this. I bought it for a couple other reasons. The first being, this would make an incredible carving knife. Now, for those who know wood carving, a little bit of a, little bit of a tip here for beginners, never buy a knife with a blade as long as the handle. Do not do that, because if you get a knife, say a stiletto folder, the handle is going to be about the same size as the blade. And the blade, if it's all long and thin, is going to be difficult to control because there isn't as much of a pressure point. You're putting your, your weight into the blade, but it's not being dispersed in any specific area throughout the entire blade. Thus, you have less strength in your cuts. But here... You have a strong handle that fits comfortably in the hand and one short bit of blade where you can put all of your pressure into, which would make this a lovely carving tool. I always use my favorite example for a carving knife, budget um, folding pocket knife that would make for a great carver, the Arthur Wright & Son Etric. Again, you can see the handle fit, fills the entire hand and it's very comfortable but you can see you got that short blade where you can put all of your strength to cut into the wood. So I see this being a far better carving knife than, say, the Open L number 8 with a relatively large blade, because then you're putting force into it, but only one area of the blade will be really getting the force of that cut. The rest of it is just, well... It's going to make it harder to push through because you have more blade to work with, if this makes any sense. But if you have a small blade, all of the strength is being applied into that one area and making it much easier to push through the pieces of wood. So this knife would make for a great carver 
because it has a short blade and a comfortable handle. This would make a great wood carving knife. Whether you're doing the backhand holding position or the forward cut, it doesn't change the fact that this is an excellent carving knife. I've never used it for carving, but just simply looking at it, I can tell this will make an excellent carver. Um, but aside from wood carving, just a, just a general everyday carry knife, this would be a great box cutter. Blade shape would be great for that. Um, an apple peeler, this would be excellent. Really any small everyday carry tasks that you'd really have, this would be a great knife. I'll compare it to another equally good small everyday carry. Here it is with the Case Swayback Gent. Again, box opening, apple peeling, this would be just as good. And I think that this knife would very much excel in that kind of light EDC work kind of, I guess, genre. It would make for a great small EDC. So, specifications, for those who want. You've got 12 c 27 M Sandvik steel, which is a very reasonable steel. It's a modest steel. Nothing too fancy, but it's not, you know, OS 8 or OS 6 or anything like that. It's decent. Um, decent edge retention, easy to sharpen up, decent um, corrosion resistance, and it, it does take a very nice edge. I've always said Openels have very thin blade stock, which means they are incredible slicers. You are probably hard pressed to find a better slicer than an Openel. Heck, even a larger knife like the number 8. Look at how thin that blade is. That would make a perfect slicer. You know, it's kind of ironic when you're saying a knife would make a good slicer. That's kind of the intention. But these knives are probably the best of the best. And yet they're incredibly cheap. So, you've got a very slicey hawkbill blade, which, as I said, would, aside from the garlic and chestnut and fruit pitting, it would make for a great carving knife. A great light EDC knife, I think it would be excellent for that as well. And because you've got the Vero Block locking ring, it would make for an excellent strong knife too. Because look at this, you've got a blade that's relatively small. And at the same time, you have this lock. And I've always said the Open L Vero Block is an incredibly strong, if not the strongest locking mechanism I have ever seen. Because compared to a lockback, right? Lock back, when you lock the knife open, you have a lock bar, which you have to press to close the knife. But in theory, if you put enough pressure on it, you could snap the lock, pretty much just break the lock and put enough effort in to push the lock bar out of the way and close the knife, essentially like a glorified slip joint. And that's why even lock blades can be a little bit dangerous if you're really putting a lot of putting a lot of use into them. For example, I have heard of cases where lock knives have failed because you're just putting them under so much stress. And granted, you're not supposed to put a knife under that much stress if it breaks a lock. But even so, it can happen. This, the only way for this knife to close is if you manually push the lock out of the way. Because it is impossible for the blade to close when there is a piece of metal in front of it, essentially turning it into a fixed blade. And... It's not like you could even argue, as stupid as this sounds, the blade can't cut through the piece of metal, because it's not even sharp. You can see, the sharp edge only begins here. There is no sharp edge down there. So really, once this lock has been engaged, as long as you don't push it out of the way, this knife is essentially now a fixed blade. You can't close it no matter what you do. And I think that that is still one of the most genius locking mechanisms ever in the history of knives. It's so simple. It's so easy to do. It's so easy. Anyone could learn how to use this. It is that easy. It's just twisting a lock. That easy. I I really like their mechanism. Openel has always done a great job with their with their lock mechanism. I think that an Openel with a lock is one of the best knives you can get. They do make plain friction folders, but they don't feel that safe to me because there is no form of lock whatsoever. But the knives with locks are top-tier choices. I'd recommend them to anyone. I've been rambling a bit. You know, nothing new there. But one thing about this knife that did attract me, getting back to the actual knife that we're supposed to be talking about, 
I really liked how this had different wood. This is the only Opinel with chestnut wood, hence it's a chestnut knife. When I saw some US retailers selling it, for example, Knife Center, Blade HQ, I'm pretty sure also had it, they said it was beech wood, and it looks kind of like beech wood. But Opinel's official website said chestnut wood, European chestnut. And I figured, well, if I'm going to trust anyone, I'll trust Opinel's official website. So when I got this knife, by the way, I found this at Moonraker UK, Moonraker Knives UK, on the back of the box, you can see it says varnished chestnut handle. So that confirms this is an all altogether new wood. This is not beech. This is a completely new wood. And this is the only knife with chestnut wood. So for that alone, I, I collect Opinels for various reasons, various sizes, um, and various blade blade um, materials, stainless, carbon, etc. Polishes, satin finish, mirror finish, but especially different handle materials. And when I saw that this one had a different material, a different blade shape, being a hawkbill, and a size that I almost never see, number seven, I figured I have to get one of these. And they're very inexpensive too. So I think that if you are interested, you should go and get one too. I think the cheapest price is at moonrakerknives.co.uk. So go and pick one up if you're interested. But all in all, what are my thoughts on this knife? Well, I think that if you're putting it in the context of a chestnut, garlic, garlic or pitting knife, it would be excellent. Again, the blade shape is perfect for pitting, perfect for peeling garlic or chestnuts, and for a foraging tool, I think it's outstanding, or kitchen prep. So yes, for that, absolutely, if you want a good chestnut, garlic, or pitting knife, excellent choice. Go get one. If you're not buying it for foraging or cutting food, and you instead are more like me and you want it for the wood carving aspect, again, amazing choice. Great geometry for cutting, great blade shape for cutting wood, you are probably hard-pressed to find a better whittling knife for the price, especially with that thin blade stock. That would just cleave clear through pieces of wood. Plus, these come incredibly sharp, so yeah, this would be a perfect carving knife straight out of the box, and that lock makes it so that the knife would not close on you when carving. So if you're not interested in the chestnut, garlic, or pitting aspect, and instead you want a wood carving knife, again, I'd recommend it just as much. Or if you just want it for a, you know, a nice box cutter or string cutter, or apple peeler, just a general everyday purpose knife, but you don't really like the generic clip point shape of an open L blade, if you don't like clip points and you want something different, then yeah, this, this would be a great choice. So there's that too. So all in all, I think that you can't go wrong with this knife no matter what. Of course, if you want it as, you know, a tactical, you know, SEAL Team 6 weapon, then of course you're not going to, you're not going to have anything out of this. This is not what you want. But if you want it for just small, light, everyday carry, and plus this isn't a knife that'll scare anyone, aside from the fact that the blade's really small, as Nick Shabazz wisely put it, wood seems to soothe people who get scared easily by knives. They look at it and think, oh, that's cute. That looks like something my grandpa carried. Not, oh no, murder weapon. And as Nick describes it, dives under tables while screaming. Um, Nick Shabazz is great. Go check him out. Um, but anyways, yes. So really, in any aspect, this is a great knife. If you're looking for the cooking and foraging factor, it's excellent. If you're looking for the wood carving factor, it's excellent. And if you're looking for just a small, light, everyday carry knife, and you you know you want a hawk build instead of a clip point, then you can't go wrong either. Or if you're a collector like me and you just really like the idea of getting a new wood, then you know add it to the collection along with like every other open L wood type that they use. But you know there's that too. So all in all, you have a very comfortable handle, very nicely done, strong lock, good blade steel for the price, great blade geometry for carving and pitting and peeling and everything, or just, you know, general light EDC use. Got the cut. The one thing that I will say that they could have done is probably not put a cut this big in the wood. You could have probably managed to have that much extra um, 
not being cut, I think you could, probably could have put just a cut in up till here, because that's enough for the blade to be open and closed. But, you know, you didn't have to make this big of a saw cut. That's just, that's just my personal opinion. Um, sorry this video has been very rambly. I apologize for that, but all in all, no. Absolutely great choice. Inexpensive. Great knife. It's open L. You can't go wrong with it. Great wood carver, great forager, great kitchen prep. Just lovely knife overall. And, you know, plus you're getting chestnut wood, which open L's never done before, so it's unique. So all in all, I think this is a great knife. I think that if you if you're interested, you should grab one. They're still making them. I don't think they're limited edition or anything like that. And for the price, you just can't go wrong with it. It's a really inexpensive knife, but it's excellent quality, as all of Open Elm's knives are. So, thank you very much for watching. This has been the Open L number seven chestnut, garlic, and pitting knife, aka one of the best wood carving Open Elms I've ever seen. And this is the Streaming Enderman. As always, signing off. Goodbye.